So the big idea in the paper is that we discovered that many of the molecules, maybe most of the molecules, repurpose for COVID-19, most of the drugs repurposed for COVID-19 over the last year and a half are actually artifacts. They're not working the way people think they work. They don't have real therapeutic potential. Instead, what they're doing is they're disrupting um, lipid homeostasis, which is the balance of lipids in the cell. Um, and that actually does inhibit viral replication, but it also leads to toxicities in the cell. So it's, it's a general mechanism. It's working for lots and lots of repurposed drugs, but it's not a mechanism that has therapeutic potential. Um, so that's the big message for a lot of drug repurposing for COVID-19, and that's where the, the big splash comes from. Sort of looking into the future, um, I think that this actually has implications for a lot of antiviral drug repurposing and antiviral activity for, for drug discovery. And I think more generally, it, um, it, it's going to turn out to be a general mechanism. We're quite confident about that. And it'll affect the way a lot of people work. And, and so that's the bad news. The bad news is that we, because we found it first for our compounds, that we had been repurposing too. Um, the bad news is that we and a lot of other people in the community have wasted a lot of time. We didn't know about this mechanism. It's like no fault, but like billions of dollars have been spent on these molecules. That's the bad news. The good news is that this paper illustrates a really clear way to find these molecules very early and, and, and move on. Because there are actually some, uh, some drugs that have come out of the repurposing efforts that look really promising, including ours, uh, at the QBI effort here at UCSF. And, um, and so it, what this paper does is it, it teaches a way to, to separate the wheat from the chaff because there, there are some really interesting drug repurposing opportunities.